Everyone. Welcome to my channel, The Jane Eyed Sews. I wanted to make a quick video, sort of uh, uh, different from my extremely long videos on Jane Austen research that I have done, and show you how I turned this wig into something that looks somewhat more like a hedgehog for my 1790s outfits okay. and I chose this wig in part because it's pretty inexpensive here I just pulled the other one out of the bag and also because costuming drama over on her channel she got one of these and made a quick and dirty hedgehog right before she went on her trip to Europe last year and of course nobody's going on trips anywhere this year but this is what the wig looks like originally I know it's blending in with that one okay it's very curly and you've got kind of short hair up here and then long hair down here <laughs> so it's kind of already like a mullet um, primed for hedgehogging and if you do go to costuming drama uh, her channel and I'll link the video down below, but she took the hair and I did the exact same thing and basically ironed with a lot of steam this really long stuff down here. So just combed it out and steamed it on her ironing board and uh, like her, my ironing board got very wet from using the, uh, the steam and the iron and then kind of brushing out the top and cutting it so that you get kind of this mullet shape like we have here in my finished one. Now, I made this wig in part because I have fine hair and I do not enjoy trying to wrangle my fine hair into historical hairstyles. It just, it makes me crazy. I would rather just throw it back in a braid like it is right now. This is pretty much my typical hairstyle. Get it away from my face, the flyaways away from my face, and then move on with life. That is why I made this very cheap wig into something that I can throw on, and it looks vaguely historical. You know, it doesn't have the powder, it doesn't have the pomade, but you've got the short hair up here. It's kind of curly, frizzy. And then you've got some longer curls down here um, and I can just throw it on and yay that part of the whole getting ready is over my favorite part of getting ready is putting on the clothes my least favorite is the whole hair thing and so that maybe you're the same maybe you've got fine hair and you just don't want to deal <laughs> with trying to make it do something that it just does not want to do and so you you want a cheap wig. Now eventually I hope to be able to invest in an actual human hair wig by one of the really cool historical hair wig companies that are out there. Uh, but for right now, you know, this thing was really cheap on Amazon and Noelle, uh, she turned it into something that looked decent. So I thought I would try the same thing. And so here we go. We have Marie Antoinette by Le Brun from 1783. And then we have, let's see, coming up here, uh, Marie Domesnil by Marie <laughs> Lemoyne, um, late 18th century. We also have a uh, fashion plate. All of these are showing the kind of hedgehog hairstyle from the 1780s. Here's Portrait of a Lady with a Book Next to a River Source by Antoine Vestier, 1785. Again, these are all inspiration for the hedgehog hairstyle. Uh, 
hairstyle. And here's Mr. and Mrs. William Hallett, The Morning Walk, 1785 by Gainsborough. Uh, and then finally, Queen Charlotte by Thomas Lawrence from 1789. And all of these are uh, inspiration for this hedgehog hairstyle, which you can see here, I'm trying to work out the hair in this wig and separate a little bit more from the top in order to curl it. When I originally made this, I put um, hair cushions in there and they did not work so well. They made my hair look kind of clown-like. And I know that some of the portraits and, and things like that almost look clown-like, but I, I overdid it, even for me. Um, here I have a little cap from earlier in the century, 1760s maybe, just to show you how silly it looks. <laughs> so I took those cushions out um, after taking this, this picture and I ended up uh, taking a lot more of that hair from the top and letting it down and um, later on I will be curling it. But I also had to cut a lot of the hair at the top. So the first thing I did was just kind of clip it up there. But uh, here I am brushing some of it out and I'm putting in um, the curlers. And the curlers are actually perm rods. I have found that the different perm rods are actually different sizes. Uh, the different colors of perm rods are different sizes and I use those smaller gray ones for Regency curls at the front like the bangs and then these bigger ones that are mauve or magenta I use these for the um, larger curls that you have at the back in a lot of these 1780s hairstyles. I was a bit frustrated that these plastic perm rods came in a plastic bag three sets of plastic bags, uh, which then came in a plastic bag, which then came in a plastic Amazon mailer. So there's a lot of plastic here, but I'm just separating it into sections. I didn't get really scientific with this um, and rolled them up. I think I used six total perm rods at the back to get those uh, fatter, more nice curls. And then the rest of it, I just pretty much frizzed or teased with a fine-toothed comb to get more of the fuzzy look um, of the hedgehog up top. And I really did not need any hair cushion, cushions or anything like that to get the hedgehog look that I wanted. And when I trimmed it, just like Noelle of Costume and Drama did, I didn't cut it all at the same length because then it would look a little bit awkward. Instead, I just kind of chose little tiny hanks of hair and cut them at slightly different lengths. So it looked hopefully a, a little bit more natural. But when you're using the perm rods, you have a little cap at the top, and I always forget that. But you pull the little cap off at the top and then you roll it up and then you just close the cap and the little plastic band will end up holding the perm rod in place, which is really nice. Um, and perm rods are meant to undergo some intense temperatures, so you can, you know, put them under high heat and they're not going to deform or anything like that. Because what I'm going to end up doing with this hair is I am going to boil it. <laughs> but, uh awkward camera angle here. I'm still learning about camera angles. This is only my second video that is not a recorded Zoom meeting, so please bear with me. But this is very early on um, when I was filming myself and, you know, so sorry <laughs> that the camera, camera angle is always the same, it seems like, and um, it's a little bit awkward. But I'm rolling up that hair, and you'll notice that I did not re-iron the braid so I had braided it originally but I didn't re-iron it and it turned out fine. I boiled some water in my tea kettle which means that when I actually poured it onto the hair it wasn't it, it had been boiling a little bit before it wasn't boiling right then. You can also dunk them in boiling water I guess but I just felt this was safer because uh, it is plastic and I sort of got a little weirded out thinking I was making plastic tea 
One of the benefits slash curses of being an environmental scientist is that I think about chemical reactions and a lot of chemical reactions occur with hot water. And I was kind of thinking, oh, I'm making plastic tea. There are probably little plastic particles or microplastics in this water now. But I left it in the water for two minutes. So I essentially steeped the plastic <laughs> um, in there for about two minutes. And then here I'm carefully taking it out so that I don't cook myself. Let it drain just a little bit. And then I put it on a plate in order for more of the water to come out. And I, di I did end up basically a little while later, pick it up and put the, um, but it took a while for the curls to dry. And here they are, they're finely dried, but I did end up pouring a little bit of water, excess water off of the plate. It took like two days. Um, I felt like I was waiting forever and I just kind of unrolled one a little bit and noticed that it was still wet. And so I, I rolled it back up and just let it go for another 24 hours. And I'm, I'm in a humid climate. That probably has something to do with it. You can also put it over a heater vent in the winter, I guess and it'll be drier in the winter anyway, but I uh, did not do that, and so it did not um, dry very quickly. You'll notice here as I'm uncurling them, I'm not doing a very good job. Eventually I get to the point where I unroll um, the perm rods in the direction that I want the curl to go, and that's what I'm doing here for this third one. You don't want to just pull it out Instead, you kind of want to unroll it in the direction that you want the curl itself to roll. And these perm rods, if you immerse them in water like I did for two minutes before taking them out, they will take on a little bit of water. And so uh, if you don't want something to get dripped on, just be careful of that. So I did end up spilling a little bit of water on my wooden sewing table, which was not a big deal, um, and on the floor and I sprinkled a little bit on a cat who was sitting down there watching me. Like I said, there were only six total curls back there. You could probably do more. Um, you might even do fewer. Um, it's up to you, but I just did six. And after I got all the curls out and confirmed that they were bouncy bouncy, yay! Which was very different from the character of the frizzy curls from the original wig. Um, I then just collected them and then tied a kind of half-assed bow <laughs> to hold them in place. I was thinking I might put an elastic band around them, but I couldn't figure out how to do that um, without messing up the curls. The elastic band would keep them more secure, but this actually seems to have held um, in the weeks since I did this. So, seems to be fine. And then after you have the bow the way that you like it, again, you test for bounciness of the curls and you can let the rest of the hair down. And at this point, the hair above um, is a bit shorter than it was in the original wig. I did trim it in order to get that hedgehog shape. I might end up cutting off a little bit more at the edges, I don't know. But it seems to look okay once I get the cap on, which I'll do here in a second. Also, the, uh, the wigs, the wig head and the wig stand are extremely useful in doing this. I, don't, I think it would be extremely annoying to try to do this without um, the wig head and the wig stand. But here's my little cap. I use the American Duchess Guide to 18th century dressmaking, and I believe this is the 1780s hat that goes with the Italian gown in that book, which makes sense because I'm eventually going to put this on with my Italian gown, or one of my Italian gowns, and so I'm pretty happy with it. It, it looks a lot better than my previous wigs. So I have two of these wigs. Yeah, I know. And I'm going to use the other one for 1790s because it's got kind of that really messy, curly look. 
uh, that you see in a lot of the fashion plates in the 1790s to go along with 1790s round gowns um, and with open robes or without open robes. And I think that would be okay, kind of cool. Again, instead of having to try to fix my hair that doesn't want to be fixed, I could just throw on this wig and I'm going to put some kind of, oh, you can hear my cat trying to get out because I closed the door. How dare I close the door? Um, put some kind of silk sash or, or even um, a thin or narrow silk scarf kind of thing to look like those um, fashion plates. So we'll see. Why do you only want to go out when the door is closed? When the door is open, you stay in the same spot all day. No answer. But these are plastic wigs and I don't really like buying plastic. Plastic feels inevitable these days. You know, it, it's, it's everywhere. And it's a product of the fossil fuel industry, which of course contributes to climate change. Yes, climate change is real. I am an earth, earth science teacher, earth scientist, so uh, I, I can see the evidence and that's how I interpret it and that's how most science scientists interpret it. But, uh, so this is it. I'm not buying any more plastic wigs. I am telling myself now and I'm telling YouTube, I guess, <laughs> that I am not buying any more plastic wigs. I feel like we are living in the plasticine. And when I say plasticine, no, I don't mean the uh, Pleistocene with a southern accent. The Pleistocene is the last ice age. What I'm talking about is the plastic that's everywhere and the sediments that are being deposited today. So the Pleistocene, the word Pleistocene is uh, the name for the geologic epoch that was the last ice age. And I think the current one, some people call it the Anthropocene or Anthropocene, meaning that humans have a large impact on uh, deposition and erosion and we'll see that in the rocks that are deposited and eventually become uh, the sediments that are deposited i'm sorry and eventually become rocks and now i think we're we're depositing so much plastic that in the future when the stuff that's deposited now will becomes rocks um it's going to be very clear <laughs> that it was in a depositional environment where humans were impacting it with all the plastic that we we put in when I was brushing out the other wig it's pretty crazy there all this stuff came off of it and I wish I could send this back at this point but I can't I've opened it I've I've messed with the curls I'm not gonna send it back I put it on my head I wouldn't want someone else to do that and then send a wig back because the wig company, or Amazon in this case, is just going to have to throw it away. And we don't want that. So when I was brushing the other wig out, I ended up brushing out this much stuff. And you can use this as a rat or something to give it a little bit more poof. And I might do that with this other wig. Um, but it seems pretty poofy when it's on me already. So maybe not. Maybe I'll use it for a future one. Make my own sort of wrap for a different wig or to prop up my own hair, maybe. Um, but you know, this is all hair like plastic. And I brushed it off. I put it in this bag with some other stuff. And then, as well as the, the clippings from the other wig, and then it disappeared. And now I realize that my cats took it. And I was afraid they had taken it and somehow gotten inside and ingested the plastic. And that's kind of a what's going on in, in nature. You know, we, we put the plastic out there and then the creatures that are out there that are used to eating little things, little organisms, or little bits of pieces of plant end up eating the plastic and it ends up in their stomachs and some of them die. Some of them are screwed up for the rest of their short lives. Um, and this disturbs me. So I'm gonna commit right now to not buying any more plastic 
for my hobby, at least plastic things that I would wear. I'm gonna try to just buy fabric that is natural fiber, so silk, silk, cotton, wool, and linen. I'm already doing well at that. Um, thread, you know, all of the, the notions that I need for sewing, and I'm gonna try not to buy, I'm gonna try my hardest not to buy any more plastic stuff. And you know, if my hair doesn't look great and you see me, <laughs> just know that it probably doesn't look great because I couldn't figure out a way to make my own hair do what I wanted to do. And instead I, I just, you know, tried my best. But this is the last plastic wig I am buying. I am going to take this wig and make a 1790s style wig where you've got the curls, the shorter curls at the top and then kind of longer curls down here at the bottom and I might iron these out and recurl them so they look a little bit more consistent with the portraits and the um, fashion plates that I've seen. And uh, I'm going to make sort of like a, a head wrap kind of thing like some of the fashion plates, some of my favorite fashion plates of 1790s round gowns. But that is it for these plastic wigs. Not that I'm gonna tell you what to do. You have to, um, you know, do what's best for you. But I now have four plastic wigs, three of which I've used in the last year, um, or modified in the last year, or plan to use in the near future. And I think that's enough. I don't think I need any more plastic wigs um, or make anything else out of plastic. It's. Uh, it's very tempting and it's so easy. And that's what bothers me is that it's so easy to purchase plastic in so many different forms. And then because it's so widespread and so cheap, so readily available, if it doesn't work or it breaks, you know, we just throw it away. We try to recycle as much as we can, but the, uh, the Axiom uh, Recycle, Reduce and Reuse is actually reduce, reuse, recycle. You should reduce the amount of stuff you buy in the first place. And if you do buy stuff, try to buy it secondhand. Um, and then what you do have, try to reuse it. And that's what I'm planning on doing with these wigs. I'm gonna reuse them until they fall apart and then maybe I'll use the bits and pieces to make uh, hair pieces for my own hair and maybe figure out ways to get it to work. You know, if I swoop it over, things like this. And then the last one is recycle because recycling takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of water to make the stuff in the first place, and it takes a lot of energy to recycle stuff as well. And that energy is uh, more often than not from fossil fuels, at least where I am. And I'm so happy that we're increasing the proportion of the energy that we're using uh, from renewable resources, but we're not there yet. So, and this is my soapbox. I'm gonna step down now and go take some photos or some video um, in these wigs.